and welcome to Interaction Design Basics. This is the second in a series of five videos about usability and instructional design. In the previous course, we introduced you to usability design and why it is important to design for how your end users will interact with your software or instructional materials. In this lesson, we will build on that foundational knowledge and introduce you to some basic principles of interaction design. By the end of this lesson, you should have a sound understanding of some ways that you can immediately apply usability principles to instructional design projects that you are currently working on or will be working on in the future. There are several different principles that could be considered basic principles for usability. There are five that we will discuss for this lesson. Consistency, perceivability, learnability, predictability, and feedback. These five principles can be considered foundational principles of usability. If you do nothing but work on applying these five principles to instructional design projects, then you will likely reduce drastically the main usability issues that learners commonly can run into. Let's start with consistency. When it comes to designing any kind of software interface that is intended to be interacted with by various users, consistency in layout and design is one of the most basic usability heuristics. Users notice change, and if something changes from page to page in a website, mobile application, or software interface, then users can easily get confused and lose their way around. Or they can lose their sense of where they are at in the scheme of things. This is especially true with navigational design. Users can easily get lost in the many pages of a website, for example, that they are trying to navigate, or maybe through the different screens of a mobile application. In Steve Krug's book, Don't Make Me Think, he points out that navigating any kind of interface is a lot like shopping at a grocery store. Pretend that you walked into a grocery store only to find there were no signs to identify where certain groceries are found. As a shopper, you would not know where to begin to find the items that are on your grocery list. You would have to start wandering around hoping to randomly run into the groceries that you need. This would especially be difficult if the groceries were not organized in a logical fashion. It would be annoyingly time consuming to fill up your cart with the items from your grocery list. Now imagine that you are blindfolded and randomly guided into the grocery store by a friend. Pretend that they dropped you off right into the middle of an aisle, then pulled off the blindfold and asked you to identify where you were at. Without any visual cues, such as a sign or aisle descriptions posted, you would likely have a difficult time identifying where you are located. You would probably be able to discern that you are in a grocery store and have a general idea of what section, but that would be the extent of your orientation. This same principle holds true for navigating through web and software interfaces. Good usability and consistency means that users should be able to quickly identify where they are within your application at any given time without much effort. Consistency also means that otherwise remain constant so that the user is able to gain a certain level of familiarity allowing them to focus on content and not get distracted. The next principle we'll take a look at is perceivability. Users will not interact if they don't know that the opportunity to interact exists. Good design provides ways to help users to know when, where, and how they can interact. Some ways to help users perceive how they can interact with your interface include the following. Providing meaningful labels, for buttons, for links, or for any element in your interface that users can interact with. Additionally, providing differences in appearance is also very helpful. For example, having color contrast with your button in the background can help the user quickly identify buttons or other elements that they can click on or interact with. Users will attempt to interact with anything within your software interface that appears that it can be interacted with. Therefore, it's always best practice to provide any kind of visual, auditory, or tactile cue that you can to prompt a user where they can interact. Providing multiple cues is usually best, and going beyond the visual only can also be very helpful. A good example of this are scroll bars and pop-up boxes. You'll remember that scroll bars generally have lines in the middle of the bar to indicate to a user that they can click on that region and move the bar up or down to scroll to view content. Pop-up boxes usually have some kind of visual indication at the bottom right such as an indentation or lines themselves that provide to the user a visual cue that they can grip that area and resize the box. This is referred to as affordances. An affordance is any kind of cue 
that indicates to a user that they can interact with that area and it generally implies by the shape, design, or cues that are provided how that item should be interacted with. Learnability involves designing your products or software interfaces so that users are easily able to get over the learning curve of using your product. Interactions should be easy to use and easy to remember. And since every interface has some degree of learning that a user must get over, the simpler you make it for your user to be able to figure out how to interact and to remember how to do this, the better. A great way to apply this principle of learnability is to design a software interface in a way that enables users to transfer skills that they have learned from previous software applications to your current design. A good example of how this is being done is in the design of mobile applications for smartphones. A swipe is a common action that can be used in several different mobile applications where a user simply puts their finger on the screen and moves it across the screen to change the content. Since this is a common action, mobile application designers will generally try to integrate a swipe as an option for navigational design within their application because users are familiar with it and are easily able to identify this as an interaction. Predictability is the principle that users should be able to predict or have a correct anticipation of what will happen when they interact with your software interface. This means that users should know where they can interact before they interact and that outcomes should be predictable. You should design your interface to not only enable a user to know what the interactive elements of your interface are, but also how they can achieve or make progress towards their goals. This is especially important to apply in the design of interfaces for users who are task focused. Finally, providing good feedback is a key to good usability design and instructional design at that. A good interface design should provide information to users such as location, content updates, errors, etc so that they can orient themselves and understand what the software is doing. Good feedback should complement the experience but not interrupt it. It should also be noticeable and meaningful, provided when needed, and should confirm the interaction and the outcome, allowing the users the opportunity to undo costly mistakes if needed. In a nutshell, feedback is anything that the software interface provides that lets a user know that their interaction has done something. That concludes our introductory lesson to usability. Remember that the application of these five principles, consistency, perceivability, learnability, predictability, and feedback will drastically increase and improve the user experience. In our next lesson, we will be looking at how usability relates to mobile learning.